Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to a moment where it actually occurred to me that it is indeed all content. I'm preparing for some upcoming tire tests, and you know me. You know I love it a beadlocks. So as I was assembling the beadlocks in question, and it wasn't just these. I mean, there, there are others that have been that have been mounted up recently. I realized, uh, much as I try not to build two rigs that are exactly the same, uh, I do find rims that I like, and I kind of stick to that style. But I do bounce around. I tend to shop whatever's cheap. Uh, these hot storms just arrived, and these Injora Method clones just arrived because they were the two cheapest sets to mount up the tires that are just out of frame to this side. And as I'm getting everything assembled and I'm getting the hardware collated, it occurs to me, what you see in front of you, those six sets are all, well, not those, but are very different. So these are the Benedict Harry's that most of us would have seen. I purchased these specifically because they don't have 24 screws holding the ring on. And sometimes that's just nice. I mean, it's not as extreme as these are held together with just six bolts. And I do love that because they are quick to assemble and they mount pretty easily. The Benedict Harry's also are the narrowest of any of the rims I own. The internal beadlock ring is only 19 millimeters wide. So you have to take that into consideration. Like on these pin seekers, these are some fairly old DJX, old to the fact that they use the RC four wheel drive mounting pattern on the back instead of the five bolt or six bolt pattern that you're gonna see. Like, you're never gonna clear this on a portal. So when you're looking up your Amazon wheels and you say, oh, those look amazing, and they are a good looking wheel, uh, that's not gonna fit on a portal rig of any kind. You can indeed fit them on straight axles, but you're not gonna get them on a portal. Uh, guys like these will fit whatever. Guys like these will fit whatever. This is what I kind of regard as the standard mounting pattern on the back. So I said the Benedict Harry's 19 millimeter beadlock ring. And I kind of shoot for a certain range of weight when I'm looking for a wheel. 75 grams is on the light side. Because when you take a light beadlock like that and you put it in a wheel, you're gonna get a fairly light combo. The rim weighs about as much as the tire and the foam put together. I like to shoot for around 200 grams. 200 grams seems to be the sweet spot. Lighter than that and often the sprung to unsprung ratio isn't going to be quite right. So I say I shoot for about 200. I shoot for about 200. Like sometimes you get a tire that's very light. You're going to be in that 175 because as you see that rim is the same is this rim and 90 grams is a, is is decent we're, we're, we we tend to shoot like if i can hit triple digits that's great if anyone was ever curious and even i wasn't until i set them next to each other do, do we think that these weigh the same will there be a weight differential between plated and coated yes there is uh and you might say to yourself well two grams between two and three grams differential between the two well, if you'll notice, all of these wheels, save for a couple, are in the very early stages of construction. They just have enough screws to hold them together. On a typical wheel of this sort with the full 24 screw outer ring, the hardware to assemble this is gonna weigh about seven grams. So with these two being two to three grams apart, that is fairly significant. That's, that's half the hardware. You're talking a quarter of an ounce, which, you know, what's a quarter of an ounce really, but quarter of an ounce is quarter of an ounce so you move up to the, these are djx from amazon as well all i mean these are all from amazon so what was this guy i already forgot 75 this guy has a more traditional in the skinny ring of a 20 millimeter internal ring which still makes him a narrow rim but as you can see the weight goes down so that's a very light wheel, which could indeed be paired with, say, a heavier tire. Like a, a general grabber is a heavier tire. So even with that super light, with this super light guy, we're still getting 175 because that's on the stock memory foam. They're a little heavier. So this is a tuning thing that I didn't even realize I was doing until I started putting stuff together. 
So, like, this guy and that guy weigh about the same. This guy's a little on the light side. So if we pair him with a lighter tire, say, what do I have unmounted? If we were to pair that with, say, a Mad Beast, we're really light. Now there's no foam in there. Put the foam in there. 157, add seven for the hardware. You're looking at about 165. That's still really light. To me, 165 is light. Now, I didn't know this. Uh, like I say, I tend to shop by price. The, the price is kind of is where I go. Well, uh, two things. Price, and then behind that, I want six bolts to mount the back. I do not favor the five-bolt ring because especially you will see five bolt rings a lot on the narrower beadlock ring and that makes it really difficult to mount a tire particularly if you have a tire that's like a big sidewall guy a big mushy guy trying to mush this down onto that with five bolts is not easy it's far easier to mount any of these six bolt guys so instead of chasing the weight and trying to tune that weight just right like the steely guys they they come out right you saw that guy he's like 200 the hunk is a very light tire, so even with a dual stage in there, he's in that 175. Adding another roughly an ounce to that is not going to be easy. You're going to have to use a hub weight or a knuckle weight or something along those lines to get to that 200. 175 is okay relative to the weight of the vehicle, but I like to shoot for, for 200, which is why you won't see any plastic running in the fleet. That's 140, and the Nitto Trailer Grappler is a big tire, and it is heavy. The tire itself is heavy, and it, it just can't... You can't overcome a wheel that weighs about 13 grams. And glue-ons are even worse. I just spent the better part of an hour baking off some Duratrax glue-ons. So if you're ever considering a Duratrax tire and all they have in stock is pre-glued, just don't. Like, they use too much glue they use a lot a lot a lot of glue it took a full hour to bake to, to to heat gun four wheels off the whole reason this came about is instead of chasing that weight these are hot storms hot storm makes some of my favorite wheels the the silver old-timey wheels that are on daphne are hot storms and these i have not i don't think i have previously purchased a set of hot storm in the conventional six volt back slw's 24 bolt fronts. I don't think I bought them previously because if I had, I would remember this. Like, what did what did you do, Hot Storm? How, how? What? What? And how? I. I haven't. I, I I put a magnet on it. There's no steel. It's all aluminum. All I can figure the rear ring is a typical ring. You could probably swap the rings from these two wheels. All I can figure is that they just don't machine a lot of material out of this front. 149 grams. So if we were putting it on a very light tire foam combo, you are still through the roof. So it got me to a point where while assembling these, I, I literally just had to stop and be like, what am I going to put those on? Who needs a 149 gram wheel? Like I say, plus about seven for the hardware. So 155. 155. I, that is, that is heavy. Now, I mean, there are plenty of rims out there where you can get replacement rings. Like I have some steel chrome-plated steel rings for the Benedict Harry's, the little 19s. And, I mean, the ring makes a difference. It's a 71-gram ring. So if we were to just take the front and back, 120 plus 7, so like 128. So if we were going with a light combo, stay. We're, we're you know, we're hitting that 200. I consider this as valuable a part of suspension tuning as piston selection, spring selection, oil weight, all of it. Because tuning your unsprung weight is, is important. And particularly with single stage foams, with 3D printed inserts, things like that, 
you're not going to get a lot of weight out of this. And some tires, notably things like the hunks, pin seekers, anything that's not big or in an RTR compound, those tires are going to be light. So you're going to take a light tire and a light foam. And I like to get a rotating mass up to about a certain point. I know there are folks that try to reduce the rotating mass to an, an, a level that I would consider extreme, but I do not. I like to be in that, in that 200 range, nothing above around 250. So this guy is going to be, he's going to be right about there at the, at the limits. So I got to source out a, a, a very light tire for those. And this is just, you know, this is a journey into the thought process. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I want a rim to match a vehicle. These are Jolly Greens, and I think those look fantastic. I love these. Uh, I, I have plenty of the white. I, have the, I mean, as you can tell, I, I really, I go for these SSD clones in the deep in the deep format, but also in the shallow ones. But at the same time, when I'm when I'm working through that, the look at the cosmetics of it, the whole time I'm thinking 200 grams. I want to hit that 200 grams, which is uh, yeah, it's it's half a pound. So we we'd like to get half a pound a corner, or as close to as possible. So I, I I don't know where this this just this just popped into my head. It's all content, right? This this is how I this is how I go about it. I love beadlocks. Everybody knows I love beadlocks. If you've if you've been on the channel, you've you've seen you've seen this. And this is what is not in service. Uh small small spoiler alert, but we'll allow it. Uh, uh-oh. What's over there? Uh, also, you know, if we're throwing out spoiler alerts, got, got, got some of these. These are the aforementioned impossible to bake off tires. So some tire tests coming up. Uh, think before you beadlock, everybody. Uh, if you have any questions about beadlocks, uh, I, I, I love talking about them almost as I love wrenching on them. So uh, drop those in the comments below. Thanks everybody. I got to get back to this because there's uh, there's testing to be done. Baseline's right right over here out of frame. There's testing to be done. Comment below, subscribe, memberships, etc. We will see you soon in a proper episode.